spicy. What is going on, everyone? I look extremely small, and welcome back to Sin City Crypto Live. My name is David. I'll be one of your co-hosts, and today, like every single weekday, except when we have internet outages, we're coming at you live from our studio here in the heart of Las Vegas, Nevada, with our daily live show. Today's content, we are featuring Coinbase news, FTX news, Celsius news, Core Scientific news. Also, SEC is after Binance.us. They are trying to block the Voyager deal. We'll talk about that also. Two big crypto payment platforms are going down. Also, Gemini COO steps down. What does that mean for the uh, for the exchange? We'll discuss that and much, much more. But I'd like to first introduce you to your co-host, Big Rob. What's up? Hola! It's your boy, Big Rob, back in the house. Welcome to Sin City Crypto. If it's your first time checking us out, we are an entertainment-focused cryptocurrency channel where we take the old, the boring, the stale information and package it up in a fun and sexy way. Also, uh, here at Sin City Crypto, we also cover SES, right? Huh? Huh? Excited, David? We we're going to see yes today. Uh, one of Vegas's uh, most uh, prized conventions uh, we are home to the largest electronic uh, convention uh, in the world, uh, CES, where we debut, where they debut all kinds of new funds and gadgets, uh, which is also Did had you say a funds and gadgets, funds and gadgets. That's right, funds and gadgets. It's weird. <laughs> uh, now, uh, uh, I, there's been a uh, a big presence uh, with Web three, Metaverse, uh, the VR world, and. Uh, a lot of the hardware for the virtual headsets and also uh blockchain uh so in uh, years past uh not been represented so uh, we're excited to go check out all the uh, uh inner workings of web3 and where it's integrated and what companies are using it so uh we'll be doing that uh, later today uh did you did you mention our guest today i did not did not we got a guest today right we do yeah you excited yeah crypto blood <laughs> will be joining us in about 30 minutes. So let's kick this thing off. We're going to go over some very important things that we need to talk about first. And the first being, take me back to the euphoria stage of the bull market. So I believe this is from Bloomberg. This is when crypto was catching mainstream, when everyone was on crypto. They broke down some of our terminology here. Diamond hands equals refusal to sell a security. And <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Refusal to sell a security. They had to slip one in there, right? You, you leave you just. <laughs> I, I didn't read yourself. that part. The security part. Uh, paper handing means selling at first sign of a loss. Uh, tendies, which I've never heard. Chicken tenders equals profits. To the moon means belief that a stock will gain significantly. J. Powell, Jerome Powell, and Yolo risking a significant portion of a portfolio on one trade. In quotations, you only live once. Um, when are these days coming back, guys? When are these days coming back? We don't know. Uh, also, hold on. What? Not, go back, man. What? What in the uh, boomer freaking uh, abbreviations are over here? This is Did they put the definition of YOLO on here? Yes. Risk Literally parentheses. What's your favorite though? My favorite <sighs> was probably the tendies. I didn't know tendies meant profit. Tendies. Yeah. Like like chicken tendies? Man, I, I raked in some tendies this week, bro. Mm. Sounds kind of weird. Um, yeah. And the uh, diamond hands. That was funny. Refusal to sell a security. <laughs> they had to squeeze that word in there, right? Kind of interesting. So, uh, guys. this uh, What is this? 101 for uh, new gen, right? Yeah, for yeah, new gen. That's what we call them. New gen. Yeah. I think that's new Paper gen. Paper hands. Not really new, but gen for sure. Uh, and then also... This was a little interesting. Uh, so Cointelegraph, one of the news sources we use, I uh, found this a little odd. We also retweeted this on our Twitter, which if you're not following us, don't go do it. Uh, Battle of the Ethereum Killers, and they have Solana versus Polygon. And my first thought was, wait, isn't Polygon a layer two? So if you kill Ethereum, you essentially kind of killed Polygon, right? I mean, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but hey, it was uh, interesting. Also, Robin, we have some news. Jim Cramer... Actually, uh, I made a video for you, my friend. Have you seen this yet? Uh, I think so. Yeah, this is for this Robin. Is where he's bashing crypto. And no, he stupid. specifically mentioned you. I think um, he's talking. He called people stupid, right? I think that crypto. I mean, I sold him a crypto. I announced everything on TV what I did with crypto. 
Yeah. But I would not touch crypto in a million years. No. Because I wouldn't trust the deposit bank. And you're making no distinction between centralized, decentralized. They fought regulation. They didn't want regulation. And you don't have regulation. So if you have your money in any of those, I, look, I'm not calling you an idiot. I'm just saying you're using a lot of blind faith. And I like to have my money at J.P. Morgan. And I check on Monday to see whether my balance is there. It's there. It feels good. Try getting your money out. When I, I had money, I'm not going to mention the firm that I had my money in, but it was a fight to get the money out. Yeah. A fight. And I think that everybody who owns these various coins, you know, Solana, Litecoin, I think you're, I do think you're an idiot. Okay? <laughs> I did not go to college to get stupid. These people who own these things. I did not go to college to get stupid. His vocabulary is is, is, is is astounding. Yeah. yeah, it's very interesting. What did, what did he say about when he looks at his portfolio? He makes uh, him feel good? His bank account. Said, when he looks at his bank account at J.P. Morgan Chase and he it, sees his balance, it makes him feel good. You know what's funny? Uh, he's, he feels probably good. Say, he's probably saying, oh, I had a hard time cashing out. Imagine this guy trying to cash out, you know, let's say $2, 3000000 million. Go try to cash out two, three million dollars at your J.P. Morgan Chase and see what'll, what'll, what'll happen there. <laughs> hey, J.P. Morgan, we need a week. Can sir? you send me? Uh, I don't know, maybe all twenties, uh, all in twenty dollar bills, uh, twenty mil. Ah <laughs> uh, man. Good, so good, we're good still far from uh, adoption, right? Mass adoption. Also, I want to show a video from our White House press secretary who is discussing Sam Bankman Fried and. Apparently, he was not just lobbying legislators for crypto. He was also helping them with COVID. And so here we are. Did you see this one? I did, unfortunately. Uh, last week's visitor log release showed a most recent meeting between Sam Bankman-Fried and a White House official, Steve Ricchetti. In this case, this was his fourth meeting of the year. I'm wondering, uh, I'm giving this first briefing since then, if you can give us any sort of summary of what has been discussed in Mr. Bankman Fried's meetings with the White House over the course of the year? Yeah, so let me uh, give you a couple of a couple of uh, a few rundowns here. Um, so uh, as we've pre previously confirmed, as you know, I know you're following this very closely, these meetings included uh, Steve Reschetti and Bruce Reed. Uh, the meetings focused on pandemic prevention related to uh, Sam Bankman Fried's foundation and general information on the cryptocurrency industry and crypto exchanges. Look, you know, uh, the administration has been clear about the need for Congress to take action when it when we talk about addressing uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, the president, as you know, released uh, an executive order on this topic just last March. And the president released a framework for protecting consumers last fall and last November. Everybody Secretary Yellen renewed this administration's call for Congress to take action. So, uh, you know, as you know, the, the White House regularly engages uh, with officials from a range of industries and sectors, including leaders uh, in business and labor and nonprofits. Uh, you know, uh, again, this meeting uh, with um, Sam Bankman Fried uh, was uh, focused on pandemic prevention uh, related matters and uh, crypto. I'm sorry, man, but I did. I didn't know, uh, you know, that was not on my Dr. Bingo Fauci card. got replaced by Dr. Fried. That was not my, <laughs> that was not on my bingo card. I don't understand. I'm sorry. If, but if you th if you think that we're gonna believe for one second that the White House had a meeting with Sam Bankman Fried about COVID protocol uh, on a nationwide level, you're freaking delusional, bro. <laughs> like if you think that we're gonna we're gonna digest your information that hey we uh we met with Sam Bankman, you literally got question. Hey, what did you meet up with Sam Bankman Fried for? What? Everybody knows. Well, we asked about his vegan it, it, as you already know, as you already did research, uh, as you're already aware, we met with Sam Bankman Free to discuss COVID uh, policy. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. There's no way. There's like. If you think I'm gonna believe that, you're 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 delusional, man. I, and and I don't think anybody believes it. Does anybody here believe it? Okay, let me ask a question to the chat, guys. Put a one in the chat if you think there was any meaningful conversation between the White House, the government, and Sam Bankman Fried on how to roll out COVID policy. Put a one in the chat if you believe that. Put a two in the chat if there was no discussion of anything and they didn't even wear masks when they had the meeting. Put a two in the chat. Thank you. Also, put a like in the chat because our like ratio is terrible. Bro, we got 39 likes. Unacceptable. Do we? Guys, we got dressed up for you today. What the heck, man? Can you, you like, at least like you it? You don't like the show?
You don't like you don't us? Like show? You don't like our dress? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to call some people out here. Call right? them out. Right, I'm going to call them out right, right now. Go ahead. I'm call them out. Right. I'm going to call them out. Who are you calling out? All right. Quote S. Retail Joe. Liam Bitcoin. Mimi. We got Jekyll S. Possession ETH. Uh, Reed uh, Landman. <laughs> I know you give a like. Yeah, I, I got uh, DP I Cash and Eric Ward. Hola! Welcome to Sin City Crypto. And also, welcome to the like button. So make sure you hit that. <laughs> Can we get yeah. a new like button? Does, it, do we have any carpenters in here? We didn't see a single two, a single one. You know what? Because y'all know the truth. If there's any carpenters in the chat, uh, and they're capable of making a new like, reveal sign. yourself. <laughs> we should make um, like a Thor Ammer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, do you have anything else no. to say? Like the White House press joke. secretary well, okay, that so represents. The, the the presidential cabinet and their policy is answering a question on Sam Bankman Fried, who was the second largest campaign donor. And the response to that question was, uh, we met up with him for COVID policy. It's absolutely absurd. Uh, the level of corruption is probably uh, beneath the blanket is, is, is probably is ugly. Bro. And you know, bad things happen beneath the blanket. That's sh don't don't you crawl we'll under leave my it blanket. At that. Don't you crawl under my blanket. <laughs> you know, Rocco, I miss Kyler. Kyler, where are you? I'm back. No, I don't want you back. <laughs> I'm back. You're rude to me. You're rude to me. You hurt my feelings. Uh, all right. Let's jump in uh, to some market uh, oversight. Uh, actually, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna show um, so I like using so I used to use uh, I used to use CoinMarketCap a lot, but I like to use CryptoRank because what it allows you to do it is allows you to uh, format the layout to however you want. So uh, this is CryptoRank.io. You can go here to layout and you can literally add or subtract anything. You can do price change three months, quarter one, uh, price change for the year, fully diluted market cap, circulating supply. Uh, my big thing is volatility. I like to add that. So that's what I got here. And so just kind of take a look at what we have. We've got Bitcoin coming in at 16,832. Volatility still around that 3%. I'm just going to hop right over to the Bitcoin chart. This is what, uh, if you joined our Twitter space yesterday because we couldn't do a live show, this is what TA Tim was talking about. So this is uh, the Bollinger Bands. Let me hide the, uh, let me hide the little level I got here. So... Uh, these are the Bollinger Bands. So this essentially will measure volatility. You have uh, two lines, standard deviation two, standard deviation two. And so anytime these constrict, you do see a big move to the upside or downside. And so that's where you got to figure out, well, is it going to move to the downside or to the upside? Everything I'm seeing, right? If you take a look at on-chain analytics, what's going on with, um, with mining, the price of Bitcoin, right? Uh, volume has kind of been steady over the last, uh, let's just say week or so. I'm, you know, my feeling is it's going to go up, right? I mean, how much farther can it go? Can it go back down to 15,500 again, retesting our, our current cycle low that we've put in? Or in my opinion, I think, uh, if it does go to the upside, we are definitely testing 17,800. And I believe Tim also, uh, uh, mentioned these levels as well yesterday, What's your feeling, Rob? Uh, nothing TA, right? Just think about everything we've been covering, all the news you've been reading. What are, are we going to see this break to the upside or to the downside? If we just go off of news related and sentiment of the people in the market, mm. I'm 50 50, man. I, I, I mean, I would like to pick a side. I'm 50 50. I think we're one uh, bullish article from breaking to the upside, and we're one uh, one more insolvency to break into the downside, or one more tweet breaking to the downside. That's right. And I think it'll take uh, less to break to the downside than it will to break. To the uh, downside. You know, we also have a break to the uh, super chat side as well. Mm. <laughs> so we I have like uh, Mark side. Peterson. Uh, so uh, Mark says, uh, "Can you guys uh, reopen a glamour shots uh, and update Carolina Ellison's photo?" Good show. Take care. From Minnesota. Minnesota, hey. eh? They're pretty much Canadians, right? Minnesota. He's probably tired of hearing that. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Just Mark. It's like uh, when people are like, oh, your name's Robin? I'm like, where's Batman? <laughs> so, uh... Never heard that one before. Yeah, of course you did. <laughs> Just like... <laughs> doesn't count. I'm from me. Mark, thank you for the super chat. We appreciate it, my friend. Uh, yeah, we'll get on that. Uh, Caroline Ellison, we'll try to find new photos. I believe she did a photo shoot for Vogue magazine. We'll mm. try to get those pictures. He also uh, did okay. photos at the uh, 
uh, the bail. I remember when she got uh, when she <laughs> the went mug to shots. the mugshots. <laughs> oh man! All right, so let's get <laughs> let's get let's get back to the markets here. Uh, we got ETH coming in at twelve hundred fifty dollars. A little bit more on the volatility side to four point four percent, and then you have BNB two fifty seven, followed by XRP at thirty four cents. And rounding out the top 10 outside of stable coins, we have Doge, Cardano, and Polygon. So I wanna, I wanna, uh, I wanna drop this down to uh, right here. So over the weekend, OKB, or not, not over the weekend, but a few days ago, OKB, which is the platform token, the exchange token for OKX, that flipped Polygon for about a day. And it was a little odd to me, right? The entire market was down, but you had OKB, you had Leo, and I believe you had, um, there was another exchange token that was in the green. Is that concerning to you seeing what we've seen with FTT? And I'm not saying OKX is FTX, right? But it's essentially the same thing, right? It's a utility token for the exchange. You use it to get uh, uh, discounts on your trading fees. Does it worry you when you see an exchange token in the top 10 that doesn't have a built out? We, we can look at BNB and say, okay, but they have a fully built out blockchain, essentially, right? Smart contracts and everything. Does it worry you that we, we're seeing stuff like OKB and Leo, all those things pump when everything else is going down? Does that worry you at all? Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, think, I don't think there's a place for exchange tokens with exchanges. Because uh, essentially they control the supply. They also control the market, and right. so they can move the price of their own token up or down. And it is common knowledge that the exchanges have the most liquidity, the most volume, the most traded of, of their own token on their own exchange. Binance has the most volume. The BNB token has the most volume on BNB, on Binance. Same thing with FTX when it was trading, FTT, same thing down the list. So if you want to move the price 10%, pretty easy to do because you control the market. And that's where, you have, that go again? that's where you have a conflict of interest. Exactly. Yep. Conflict of interest with your, uh, with your, with your uh, customers. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, man. I'd be worried, guys, uh, if you have any. I know there's, we have a couple people in here that are big fans of KuCoin. Uh, nothing against KuCoin. I just would not hold any exchange tokens. And I would be extremely careful dealing with tokens or with exchanges that have their own tokens. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, let's go back to, uh, let's take a look at what the S&P is doing. So I got this little map pulled up here for you guys. So this is from Finviz, if you guys like this. So this breaks it down into the different sectors. Everything is down except, guess what? Energy. Energy is up. Yay. Guess what else? Uh, so I know you got the, uh, the stocks there. Uh, so Amazon, did you hear? No weapon. Amazon has just uh, fired. Laid off. Yeah. Laid off. 18% of people or 18,000? Uh, 17,000 people. That's what the Fed wants, guys. Mm -hmm. Honestly, okay, let me tell you something. We talked about this on our Twitter spaces yesterday. There is such a gap between demand and supply of workers that if it doesn't close, inflation will not go away because wage growth will continue, which will trickle down to consumer products, which will trickle down to us as a consumer. And so if you don't know this already, corporations, uh, the last place they will cut profits is from their top bottom line. They will always pass it on to the consumer. They will never take it on themselves. So, mm. uh, one thing to keep in mind, but again, obviously I'm not saying it's good that people lost, you know, lost jobs. Hopefully some of those jobs that were cut were not being able to be filled. And some of those people were moved into other areas of the company because there is such a gap. I believe the number was two and a half jobs to every one worker or one person who's, who's actively working or looking for a job. So we need that. The Fed needs to see that coming to balance before they can even think about pivoting. As soon as they pivot, what's gonna happen? Companies are gonna borrow, money's gonna flood into the market, blah, 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 blah. And so- Dave, let me ask you a question. What's up? Uh, let's say um, you are a lawyer, prosecutor, somebody that is uh, just, I'm going to take somebody to court, right? Yes, yes. You serve them papers, right? Absolutely. Yeah? How do you typically serve papers? Not on Twitter. Yeah, yeah not on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next thing I was going to go. Go ahead. You got it pulled up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. 
Good God, man. Uh, let's take a look here. Pulling up. <laughs> three AC capital, <laughs> aka three AC liquidation. <laughs> when did they change their name? Uh, uh, anyways, um, <sighs> they got served subpoenas over Twitter. They got served subpoenas over Twitter. Uh, so at Kyle L Davies, JPEG copies of the subpoena are attached to this tweet and by, by, by way of service, uh, an unredacted copy of the subpoena was served via email, uh, can also be provided upon request. This is where we're at now. And you know what? But here's the, here's the thing. If you can't find somebody, if somebody's on the run and you want to serve them papers, you know what? I mean, look, uh, they don't know. Been on Twitter. Here's the thing, bro. They don't know where those guys are, but they're active on Twitter. So, hey. So, hey, like, how else are you going to get they a hold will, of them? Guys, they will find you, whether it's through Twitter, <laughs> Facebook, uh, do freaking you think WhatsApp. If he doesn't show up for court, oh, do you think they, they have some ground to Interpol say? Interpol is that. They well, say, you're, they, you're like, in contempt. We're like, hey, I wasn't, I wasn't served. I wasn't served any papers. That's BS. You think, you think he has a I leg mean, to stand on? Be like, that, well, I didn't check my Twitter. Like, that I don't know. Obviously, because I'm not a... Uh, I'm not a lawyer or a legal expert, but um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I that's gonna go. That was funny to me. Say, I had the same reaction you had. I'm like, what over Twitter? It's weird. Um, so yeah, I yeah, don't know, man. Too. Uh, but anyways, uh, I, I think there was one more thing I wanted to show. Oh yeah, before we bring on Crypto Blood, which he's in the chat by the way, uh, you guys, if you're not subscribed to Crypto Blood, the link to uh, his YouTube channel is in the description of this video. Uh, go ahead and um, go ahead and go subscribe. So this one, this is a uh, this is a big domino if it falls. So crypto focused bank Silvergate fires forty percent of its staff. They're laying off forty percent of their staff. Uh, obviously, the ties to FTX and Alameda. Uh, the Department of Justice is saying, or you know, politicians or whoever is looking into this is saying. You did not you did not think that these you set this up for the money to be diverted from FTX deposits to Alameda. You didn't seem to think to let anyone know or to raise a red flag or anything. Mm. Uh so you have <clears throat> Silvergate, which is uh the go-to liquidity provider for exchanges on on and offboard ramping of uh fiat. Uh so when you deposit to any exchange except for Coinbase, more than likely it was through the Silvergate Bank. Uh, and even Coinbase used to use Silvergate uh, just over a year ago. Uh, so it's pretty much the standard for taking fiat and injecting it into our crypto environment. Uh, who else is responsible for uh, the liquidity in our markets? I'm not talking about the the books. I'm talking about just liquidity, injecting capital, moving money around. Um, that is DCG. So DCG is in hot water. Also, Silvergate's in hot water. And, you know, uh, here's, you know, they're not the only one. Uh, Silvergate's not the only one laying off staff. Take a look at this. We also have Genesis. Cut staff by 30%. I don't know why they don't just cut it to 100%. You ain't coming back, bro, right? Well, there's separate there's separate subdivisions to Genesis. Uh majority of their operations are still up and running. Just their global trading or lending is not. Mm. Yeah. So, cool. But like I had mentioned earlier in the show, uh the COO of Gemini did just step down. And I was talking to Robin about this yesterday off camera. And uh I was like, "Hey, man, we saw this with uh, Brett Harrison from FTX.us. We saw it with multiple other people across our industry. Step down, and then what happens? Oh, a few weeks, a few days, maybe a month or two later, the whole thing's come, the whole thing comes crashing down. I'm not saying Gemini is going to come crashing down, but when your COO just quits, I don't know. To me, that's a, that's a red flag. Uh, you want to share your thoughts on that, Robin? I don't think it's a big deal. Why don't you think it's a big deal? Because the company halted deposits and trades, and there's probably not much operations going on. And no, they, as as only a, for their earn. here's the thing: if I was if I was working at Genesis, I would have abandoned ship as quick as possible. What about Gemini? If I had nothing to do, Gemini's with... Gemini's not in hot water. Apparently, everything's fine except their earn program. So they're not allowing but withdrawals. They, they're not allowing deposits either. But their exchange is fine. 
people are people are trading on it. People are withdrawing. People are depositing. As far as I know, but Genesis. No, wait, this is, is from Gemini. Gemini COO step down. Oh, Gemini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gemini. Sorry, sorry, I got the two G's mixed up. But uh, no, I I think it's just it's just normal movement. And and like I said, man, how still, is it normal still, that the COO just steps down, bro? How is that? It normal? happens all the time, man. It's just not it's not an article unless your company is under hot water. I mean, think about any company you've ever worked at. Managers come and go, man. It's just the part of the natural rotation. And so I don't think it's that big a deal, man. So COOs come and, and go. And right now, you know what? COOs Gen just come and go. Yeah. Dude, I mean, how many companies do you work for that, that change CEOs often? And you're talking about the Not COO, which isn't even the top dog. This is like the, the vice, uh, vice president of operations. Oh, sorry. The second top dog. My bad. Sorry. It's a board member. There's like 10 people all equal, equally vice presidents. Bro, this is like the speaker of the house. You have, you have the COO, the CFO, the, the CMO, the C. I mean, I, and honestly, those, those are all chief or they're the operating VP, VP officer, or whatever. Yeah. Not marketing officer, not technology, operating. Financial officer, marketing officer, you know. I don't know, man. All that I, stuff, man. It's not I like think, uh, I think it's. Yeah. You're reading too much into nah, it, bro. I disagree. I think Gemini's got a stain. Obviously, with with the yeah, whole yeah, you have uh, stains I too. I get it. I get it. They are not responsible for the. <sighs> they're saying they're not responsible for Genesis not you know locking up your money. But you know what? You went to Gemini.com and you were like, "Hey, earn money by staking uh, your your crypto here." You use their platform and. Did not um, use their platform, and uh, lo and behold, you lost your money. And so, yeah, I, I don't. Uh, I think this is just as much as Gemini's fault. Remember when we were talking about Logan Paul yesterday? I do remember. And um, you're like, hey, I hired uh, Logan Paul. Came out, he's like, I hired this guy. He was a criminal. You should looked into it. I hired this guy. He was a criminal. He's no longer with us. You should have looked into. It. Like, here's the thing, Gemini hired Genesis. And so they're culpable, bro. They're just as much at fault for the loss of money as Genesis is. I'm sorry. That's just the way I look at it. If I got my money in Bank of America and all of a sudden I don't have any of my money in my savings account and Bank of America's like, well, you know, we were using a third-party service, so uh, I don't care. It's Bank of America's fault. It's just as much your fault as it is whatever, you know, whatever other service you use. And so that's just, that's just my feeling, man. I think... Genesis is uh, at fault number one, but and a close second. You got uh, Gemini, so uh, so I, and I don't think there's too much to read. I know you go down those those long conspiracy theories, my dude. And, well, uh, you're reading, it, you're reading too much into it's it. It's not it's not necessarily a conspiracy theory. It's um, I, well, you're reading too much into it. I'll put it that way. Um, okay, would you? Okay, let me ask you this question, bro. Would you rather read too much into it and be on the safer side, or would you rather be like, oh, no big deal, let me leave my money, and then bam, Gemini shuts down? I just think if you take the top 100 companies in the world or top 100 companies in crypto, and you say, hey, has any of your board members retired in the last two mo two months? I think there's going to be a giant list of people, and you can always point and be like, well, well you see, there's there's pandemonium there. I don't think it's that big a deal. I don't know. What does the chat think? Do you guys think this is a bigger deal than Robin's making it out? If you're with me and you think this is cause for concern, put a one. Or if you're a member, put my face. Uh, real quick, I do want to give a little love to the chat, though. Uh, real quick, uh, some of the new people here. We got Crompton, uh, Rob S., Mohammed Mansahua. And we got Adi Kush is my cologne. Okay. Kush is your cologne. <laughs> we got I mean, Chad Simmons, the R Factor. All you have is now one. Joe, Taylor, and Fallen Wedge. Did to just, all of you, hola, welcome, Sin City Crypto. Did you, uh, <gasps> did you do one of those? Uh, yeah, I had a hiccup, yeah, it's kind of in there. Um, all right, so before we bring on CB, which is crypto blood, I want to take a look at, uh, I want to take a look at the DXY, the dollar index. So this is on the daily chart. So we were in a nice little downtrend uh, when we peaked out around 112.92 on November 3rd. And it looks like we've kind of flipped this trend line here. I've drawn from the 24th of, or sorry, from the 27th of October all the way down to currently. 
Typical, uh, typical break of resistance. You break above, you retest this line here, which we did perfectly, and now we are building on top of it. Uh, a level you should be looking at uh, more in the longer term. Obviously, short term, you want to look at 105.80. The next one would be 107.86. And then uh, if we do come up and retest this trend line, uh, we'll see a lot of resistance here, but that would not be good as we would be sitting right around 112 or $113 which we know from what we've seen, when the Dixie goes up, Bitcoin and risk on assets go down. What will, you know, will the Fed pivot? We talked about this on the show yesterday or on the uh, Twitter spaces. Uh, Magic joined us. The Fed minutes came out. They were, uh, yeah, when the Dixie is zero, well, when that's never going to happen. <laughs> but yeah, I get what you're saying. I, I get the joke. But um, they're pretty hawkish still. They're saying they're sticking to their guns. I believe they're going to have to pivot sooner than they even think uh, because at the end of the day, there's only so high you can go for so long you can keep it there until you start ruining not only the economy, but the uh, the liquidity in the markets as a whole. So, you got anything to add to this one, Rob? No. Pretty straightforward. Dollar sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Careful. Would you rather have the dollar or the... Uh, we're, the, we're, the, we're, the, we're the strongest. We're the strongest currency in the world. And so we strong. If I had to pick one fiat to stay in, it would be the dollar. But if you I have an option of getting out of that and going somewhere else, they're like you crypto. would not be the dollar. And Algasaurus, no, uh, fiber is not live right now. It was supposed to be. Don't don't even get us started. Okay. Anyways, yeah. Speaking of getting started, let's get started with our guest for today, Crypto Blood. <laughs> What's up, bro? What's going on, fellas? Oh, you know, hey, uh, you've seen the movie 40 Year Old Virgin, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You remember the part where they're in the uh, TV store and there are two people working there arguing, one the Indian gentleman and the other one is the, uh, I believe it was Please. Paul Rudd? It's like, I cannot yeah. re return it until it spills blood. And every time I go to the show, I just think about you. Anyways, thank you where so much we, for joining uh, us, my I'm friend. We appreciate it. I'm hearing a lot of fiat love going on. Is it, we bro, this guy's a, this guy's a narc, fiat? bro. We have to, I literally <laughs> said I don't want He's no part of the name. He's the Fed, bro. He's the Fed. Sin City Fiat? Is that the new channel He's name? the Fed. Robin <laughs> is the Fed. I'm telling you. That's why he wanted us to change our clothes into more. Uh, just kidding. How you been, man? How was your new year? Happy New Year, by the way. Yeah, I've been, I've seen, I've been seeing the professionalism, the, the step up with you guys wearing blazers and ties and both no ties blazers. and stuff i'm liking it no you blazers. know okay. our mentality is that we want to dress like we're going to the club in uh las vegas uh you know so uh that's we, not we, why we club attire fiat, baby you know because right? we're trying to open up the that club fiat. that's that's not the reason. <laughs> anyways uh guys if you're not familiar with crypto blood he does do a uh, he does do live shows uh i believe on the weekends as well as you've been doing more on the weekdays as well i believe correct yeah every, every day uh 405 or 505 uh eastern day i'm feeling eastern standard time that's correct eastern standard time come on over right. my two satoshis live and direct yes sir. every yes. time i'm in there man you be sending me mad love man i'm, I'm always in there hanging absolutely. out absolutely absolutely yeah, you don't you deserve robbed. the love uh man. david can you please yes i'm show yes. can you please show him that video from the white house the video? Yes. Oh, uh, I no. thought you wanted me to show him this. Okay. Yeah, we got we got to catch up to speed. We we cover some funny stuff today. All right, first CB, of all, yeah, CB, show him that one first. CB, but you got to show him the White House video, I got man. You. CB. So <laughs> this was from the height of the bull run. So uh, this is, uh, I believe, it was Bloomberg teaching everyone our lingo. And so um, <laughs> just go ahead and take a second, read over these. Uh, of note, I'd like to mention they said diamond hand means refusal to sell a security. They threw that in there. <laughs> tendies. Tendies stand for chicken tenders, which stands for gains. <laughs> to the moon Never means... Never heard that one. Yeah. To the moon, belief a stock will gain significantly. And then YOLO is ri uh, risking significant portion of a portfolio on one trade. And they put in parentheses the Yo definition of what YOLO stands for. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, they should put LOL down there as well. Uh, yeah. The definition Laugh out loud. <laughs> Which of these is your L favorite? Which L one do you want to see come back? L O L Z, Luz or Luz or L U L Z, right? <laughs> yeah. Which, Which is one's my your favorite? favorite, man? I'm kind of digging the tendies. Man. The tendies. No, is, I, yeah, I got. I had go. an ex girlfriend. I've that never heard that one. When I when yeah. I was in high school, I had an ex girlfriend. She used to always put L M A O, 
And I always thought it meant lame-o. And then uh, for the longest time, I was like, I don't get it. Like, why do you keep calling me lame? <laughs> well, she wasn't lying. <laughs> Lady that had a point. Hilarious. Yeah. So I, I should have been subscribed thing. to Bloomberg when I was uh, dating. I, maybe I would have been up to date with the uh, ter terminology. You know? Yeah, you need, to get your, uh, you need to get your stuff going. All right. Uh, definitely take chicken off the table. That's for sure. I never heard of tendies, though. Chicken is definitely the moolah. I love chicken. Chicken's delicious. Chicken tendies. All right. Uh, so you want to you want to see this uh, the video, right, um, dude? Tell me you saw the White House press secretary talk about Sam Bankman Free. Because if you don't, if you haven't, this is this is gold, man. No, I haven't. I don't. Oh watch man, them. listen to this. This is this is absurd. Between Sam Bankman Free. White House official Steve Ricchetti. In this case, this was his fourth meeting of the year. I'm wondering, uh, I'm giving this the first briefing since then, if you can give us any sort of summary of what has been discussed in Mr. Bankman Freed's meetings with the White House over the course of the year. Yeah, so let me uh, give you a couple of a couple of uh, a few rundowns here. Um, so uh, as we've pre previously confirmed, as you know, I know you're following this very closely, these yeah, meetings really. included uh, Steve Reschetti and Bruce Reed. Yeah. Uh, the meetings focused on pandemic prevention related to uh, Sam Bankman frieds foundation and general information on the cryptocurrency industry and crypto exchanges. Look, you know, uh, the administration has been clear about the need for Congress to take action when, it t when we talk about addressing uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, the president, as you know, released uh, an executive order on this topic just last March, and the president released a framework for protecting consumers last fall and last November. Secretary Yellen renewed this administration's call for Congress to take action. So, uh, you know, as you know, the, the White House regularly engages uh, with officials from a range of industries and sectors, including leaders uh, in business and labor and nonprofits. Uh, you know, uh, again, this meeting uh, with um, Sam Bankman-Fried uh, was uh, focused on pandemic prevention uh, related matters and uh, cryptocurrency and uh, crypto exchanges. So you have, you have, okay. The White House press secretary is trying to, trying to feed us. The idea that the White House and the government met with Sam Bankman Freed for COVID and pandemic response. Does anybody on this planet believe Can't that? Make this stuff up. Can't make it up, man. Is it like this is the it up White a House press secretary answering a reporter's question saying that they met with Sam Bankman Freed to discuss COVID protocol? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna talk about plastic. Hey man, COVID COVID spreads quickly through crypto, man. You didn't know that? <laughs> they both start with C. <laughs> on the blockchain, man. You can do some some it's tracing protocol pretty quick on Once that thing. On huh? there, it's, it's, Contact tracing is quick. So, exactly. Funny the SEC wants to SEC is going after the crypto exchanges and our White House is asking them for COVID protocol <laughs> help. Uh speaking yeah. of uh the SEC, let's just jump right into some of the hottest topics of today. The first being, it seems like the SEC has their eye on Binance and Binance.us as they are filing objection to Binance US's uh, plans to acquire Voyager Digital. The US Securities and Exchange Commission has filed a limited objection to crypto exchange Binance US's proposed $1 billion takeover of bankrupt crypto lender Voyager, citing a lack of, quote, necessary information. Now, I will preface this by saying they've been trying to get info and insight into their company their financials how they ran but because binance has not raised money because they're not a publicly traded company the they they technically don't have to hand these over unless they're subpoenaed uh like kyle davies was on twitter the limited objection was filed on january 4th with the sec pointing to a lack of detail regarding binance.us's ability to fund the acquisition what the operations would look like following the deal, and how customer assets will be secured during and after the transaction. Additionally, the regulator also wants Voyager to provide more detail on what would happen should the transaction not be consummated by April 18th. Uh, I'll ask CB first. Uh, is this, uh, is, is the SEC just like, is buying, we know about the criminal charges that they've been waiting to file. What do you, uh, is this a sign that they are going after Binance, that it's not just going to stop here? This is kind of like, you know, them leading into a it's, bigger it's thing? A, it's a sign that the SEC is xenophobic. 
That's what it's a sign of. What'd you say? Look that xenophobic. Z- xenophobic. Yes. Like xenophobic. See xenophobic. Yes. Xenoph- <laughs> xenophobic. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I think they're just going after Binance because they're allegedly tied to China and they don't want to see them win. I'm just be honest with you. Um I don't understand but how CZ this has, has come anything out, to do with CZ's come out multiple times and said he has nothing to do with China. Yeah, I know. I know, but come on. That's what they yeah. all say. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. I think he does have some ties to China. He has to. In my opinion. You think you And that's think, not a bad that's not necessarily a bad thing. We just in the US, in the Western culture, in media, we spend things in a certain way, in a certain light to paint Russia, China, you know, in a bad, in a bad light. So Russia's, China's not all bad. Would you, would you want to see Binance acquire Voyager? Or do you think that's just, you don't think that's a good for our, our market where you have one, uh, you know, you have uh, Pac-Man out here just eating up everything and just getting bigger and bigger and eating up the competition. Yeah. Is that is that? Is no, that I don't know, um, man. It, it draws a lot I of parallels. So- it draws a lot of parallels to you know FTX, obviously trying to buy Voyager and I don't know. Right. Yeah, I I think um it, at this point the crypto industry is so screwed up. It doesn't even matter if Binance is the big dog, and you know. They own everything. Um, hmm. We did it to ourselves, in, in my opinion, if that happens. Uh, again, I don't know how the SEC has anything to do with a company that's in Canada, right? Voyager is a Canada-based, Canadian-based company, correct? Yeah, but but they, they had licenses operate in the U.S. Okay, gotcha. And their bankruptcy gotcha. filings are in the U.S. That's interesting. Yeah. wonder how that, how that works. Um, well, but I yeah, mean, man, I, I'm not, um, I'm not, you know, I think Binance is, uh, definitely, uh, on top of their thing, man, their, their, their business, they're doing what they are supposed to do and what other companies should have been doing. And if they fall, meaning Binance falls, man, I will be shocked. That would be my black swan. If I see Binance fall, I don't think they will. I am waiting for, um, the whole grayscale. Now we're talking about Silvergate. I'll talk about that later on my show. Those are two gray swans that possibly could pan out uh, to, to, you know, come to fruition. So I'm waiting on those two to hit. And I think at that point, we will have all the selling out of the way in crypto and we can move forward finally. Yeah, if Binance falls, uh, obviously, they're the number one exchange. That would uh, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> But um, no, yeah, I don't think this FTX thing is over, guys. Like like CB mentioned, you have Genesis, you have DCG, and Grayscale. Uh, I'm not too worried about Grayscale, honestly. I think there's going to be enough suitors. Valkyries already come forward, say they want to take over the uh, the trust. I don't think it's going to be a scenario where uh, where DCG goes bankrupt. They have to sell, liquidate, and sell all the Bitcoin to pay back the investors. I don't think that's going to happen. I think someone else will well, come not in legally, take over they're, the trust. They're not legally allowed to. You know, the way, the, going to the, way, the, bankruptcy well, the, way the trustee is set up is that it's a third party uh, holding it. So that's the whole point of the trust is that uh, Grayscale doesn't physically own it themselves. You own, I'm not sure you if, own it I'm not sure through if a third party. I'm not sure if a judge can, uh, can do that on trust. That I'm not sure. But either no. way, uh, even the, if they the, were, the assets are safe. Yeah, I, I don't think we're going to see this big six hundred thousand Bitcoin dump on the market. But what what could happen you know, is they could dissolve they could dissolve the trust, and then in dissolving the trust, the amount of Bitcoin value would be spread Dispersed, out equally yeah. to the trust. And how many of those people would sell? And them? so that that discount or that premium, the premium you're seeing now, or is like fifty percent off. If you if you bought, if you say you have two, uh, you know, the value of two Bitcoin. Um, if they dissolve the trust, you would essentially get one Bitcoin paid out to you, or at least the cash value of it. Uh, so yeah, that, and that's the thing, Rob, I think, I, and I'm not a, a bankruptcy attorney or lawyer, but I believe that stuff has to be marked to market. So in, in, in a bankruptcy proceeding, so it has to be sold. It, they can't just like give the Bitcoin back to the, the clients, the customers It has to be sold 
and then those funds, those proceeds return to the customer from my understanding. But but so. the, the trust is a little different than assets under management. Uh, the, you know, so that's kind of, they have a trustee that, that custodies it. And so I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know the details of it either. I know, I know when I've looked into it, you know, the, from, from, uh, Grayscale's website, uh, they list who the trustees, uh, are and that they're the ones that kind of custody and manage it. And, uh, Grayscale essentially gives you the platform to buy and sell, the uh, the GBT, uh, stocks that have representation value of the, uh, either way they, they can't dissolve it and you can, you're going to lose money if that happens or they can transfer ownership of the trustee. So. People are saying CZ is, uh, from the, uh, from Canada. He's a Canuck. Mm -hmm. He's Canadian. Uh, so I don't know his ties. I haven't done a deep dive into CZ's, uh, life or background. So, but I know a lot of people peg him to the whole Chinese thing or the government and he's a, a front for the government like I guess TikTok was or whatever. Canada's I don't know China if I necessarily anyway, right? What's up? I say Canada's China anyway, isn't it? <laughs> Everything's China currently. <laughs> the China of North America? Yeah. The Anyways, China of North uh, Exactly. North China. <laughs> North China. Okay. All right. Uh let's move on. Uh so we talked about Silvergate. Well, there's two mm -hmm. articles I want to cover, and they kind of go hand in hand here. First, crypto firm Juno urges users to withdraw after uncertainty with their custody partner. Uh, fiat to crypto on-ramp solution provider Juno has urged its users to sell or self-custody to the crypto on its platform, citing uncertainty with its crypto custodian partner, Wire. Wire, mm -hmm. due to uncertainty Wire's with our crypto partner, down, we have right? taken preemptive action in the interest of our customers adding it is also actively reaching out to customers to ask them to self-custody. Um, and this kind of leads into the next article, crypto payments from Wire to shut down after missing out mm. on a $1.5 billion deal. Uh, crypto payments firms reportedly shutting down after a massive deal fell through. According to a new report by Axios, crypto payments company Wire is shutting down after Bolt Financial went back on its deal to acquire the platform. Uh, the uh, CEO of Wire, Giannis Yanaros, said in an email, we'll continue to do everything we can, but I want everyone to brace themselves for the fact that we will need to unwind the business over the next couple of weeks. If you're not familiar with Wire, uh, you probably have seen them if you've went to purchase something on a decentralized platform or through your ledger. It gives you the option of buying it through Wire. They're essentially... Uh, they take your bank account information or your credit card information. Oh, yeah. I see them. They, they yeah. work with MetaMask, too. Yes. Yeah. They take your dollar. I was wondering yeah, where the hell I've seen them. Yeah. They take your money, and then they allow you to use it to buy crypto. Or you want to convert it to stable coins right away, whatever. So, hey, man. They have some high game. fees, man. I remember yeah. trying to use them on a <laughs> side high. note. Yeah, on MetaMask. Yeah. No joke. Well, I'll start with Robin first on this one. What, what are your... Uh, I mean... Uh, Okay, well, real quick before I start with Robin, let me just go over uh, this real quick. So the deal fell through from Wire and was it was it uh... something financial? It was supposed to be a one point oh. five billion dollar oh. deal to acquire Wire. But listen to this, okay? Oh. And these all these all tie together, okay? These all tie together. U.S. federal agencies released joint statement on crypto asset risks and safe practices. Uh, U.S. federal bank regula uh, regulatory agency started off the new year with a statement on crypto assets looking back at the troubles of the sector in 2022. The Federal Reserve, FDIC, and the OCC released a joint statement on January 3rd on past problems and their efforts to maintain sound banking practices in spite of those challenges. Uh, it is important that risks related to the crypto asset sector that cannot be mitigated or controlled do not migrate to the banking system. They identified eight specific risks, including fraud, volatility, contagion, and similar familiar issues. This is also a quote, based on the agency's current understanding and experience to date, the agencies believe that issuing or holding as principal crypto assets that are issued, stored, or transferred on an open, public, or decentralized network uh, is highly likely to be inconsistent with safe and sound banking practices. So you have them coming out and saying, they're essentially telling the banks, uh, we don't recommend you providing services for crypto. So these three articles that I just went over, they all tie in together. Robin, 
I'll start with you first. I mean, are they trying to steer these banks away? Like Silvergate, Wire, who knows who else is going to be next? I mean, if these people are not providing the fiat on and off ramps, what the hell are we going to do? So I think U.S. regulators are trying to contain the contagion, right? I mean, I think it's by spread by making them shut down. Yeah, they're 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 basically taking. They're talking to Binance, saying, "Hey, don't 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 buy Voyager. You have the your that article as well. Uh, you have, I don't know, man. I feel like the contagion is spreading." Silvergate is uh, underwater. Genesis is underwater. Gemini, who knows uh, anymore? Uh, you got DCG. We we're talking about grayscale dissolving the trust. I mean, we're we're in uh, some some choppy waters, man. And, and you know, regulators have been meeting. They've been having these little congressional hearings, or they where they're where they're listening to voices that don't represent our space and making decisions off of that, or at least putting the framework into making decisions. And so I. I'm in the camp that uh, government's looking at it like, hey, man, crypto's falling apart. You either put our hands up or we can just try to shut it down. And I think that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to shut down the contagion, man. What are your thoughts, CB? I don't think the banks care. That would be a, a benefit to us if they help stop the contagion. I would think they would want it to spread and ruin the whole industry. Hmm. To essentially so, I don't know kind of burn it. To kind of burn it down and build it back up the way they want it? Right. Right. So I don't know if the motives there to Rob's plan. I don't, I don't personally think the motives um the motives are to to stop contagion. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't but necessarily I don't that. Uh, yeah. That would mean mm -hmm. that they're acting in the best interests of the uh consumer, which <laughs> you know from experience. <laughs> You're right. Uh, yeah, I can't really believe that. Uh, right. Sorry. I will say uh, though, I, I think know, it's man. great to, to see this uh, this play out this way because at least now we get to see how it all um, will end versus what we saw in '08 where they bailed out everything and everyone, with the exception of one company. Um, but you know, if we can get through this, which I think we will, it's going to make us look really, really strong. You know, it's going to yeah. make Bitcoin look really, really strong as well. So, I agree. I want to give a. I want to give a, I want to give a quick shout out to Chad Simmons. Said it's his first time here. Also said his uh, his daughter's birthday is today. He's got to go. Chad to your daughter. Happy birthday! Thank you so much. Hola, Rocco. Can we get some celebration for <laughs> Chad's daughter? <laughs> what was that? That was hola, man. From who? From you or CB? From both. both. Yeah. Okay. Right. CB, I love you, bro. This guy's hola so bad. Uh, you just don't give man, him any you ain't ideas. Got no okay? rasp in your voice, bro. Don't give him a. Don't give him any <laughs> ideas, okay? Please, for the love of God. Okay. I, I was saying hola uh, on my show well, one day. Rob checked in on me. Hola. Well, he did. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Robin gets. Uh, Robin gets hurt when you use his stuff. Like I was. I said my boy. I uh, said your boy one time. He's like, it's my no, I come up with my own little catchphrases thing, and stuff. And don't uh, use my next phrase, thing you know, bro. he's over here. You know. Using my lines. I'm like, hold on, man. Same with Rice. Marked. Rice does that Hope to me. Right. I was not, like, I was sitting in the hot power. tub. I was sitting in the hot tub brainstorming, like, what's the catchy ass line You're I can so drop? Stupid. <laughs> and you over here just trying to bite on my on my words, bro. You're an idiot. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's move on from wire to what will transpire with FTX as Stop another it. per leave me alone, man. <laughs> Uh, XFTX lawyer cooperated with the U.S. prosecutors, said a Reuters report. And uh, what do you guys see or who this lawyer is? It is none other than Daniel Friedberg. <laughs> uh, so the guy that ran the Ultimate Bet scam, who was the head of compliance at FTX. Guy went from running one of the largest scams on the internet to being the head of compliance at the second largest crypto exchange in the world. A former lawyer of SBF, uh, SBF's FTX crypto firm provided details of what he knew about the company's dealings during a meeting with officials at the DOJ, FBI, and SEC. A meeting with lawyer Daniel Friedberg and prosecutors took place at the uh, Southern District of New York's office on November 22nd. So he didn't wait too long before he decided to, uh, you know, do the thing. Friedberg told prosecutors what he knew of Bankman Fried's use of customer funds to finance 
SBF's business empire. He also provided info on Alameda's operations. Friedberg has not been charged with a crime and he expects to be called as a government witness. Bro, <laughs> bro, how, this is so, bro, I am so is, sorry. This is as the world turns crypto edition, like this is- I am, uh, I am trying not to it's curse, so but this is so ass backwards. You have mm -hmm. the compliance, the, compl the guy who dealt with compliance mm -hmm. and he's work and he's going to be a, a witness for the government. He's not being charged with anything. Well, this that is, lets you know, uh, this though, thinks, Dave, that, that clearly this is all going to land on SBF. I know a lot of people think he's not doing any time. I saw the poll in the chats. I think it's most people say he's going to get off. And I'm telling you, everything is piling up against this guy, SBF, Dave. And is it, it's looking like he's going to get 100 years. So let me ask <laughs> you this question then, CB. Let me ask you this, CB. So he pled not guilty, and his uh, his uh, court date was set for October second. Do you think that was just a way for him right. for him to buy more time? Because Bernie yeah. Madoff's lawyer came out and said they can change their plea deal, and people are saying he's going to plead guilty or take a plea deal closer to his court date. Right, he's buying himself some more freedom. Right. What are your Correct. thoughts? Correct, I agree. Yes, totally. Okay. Spot on. Robin thinks that was a strategic move. Robin thinks he's crazy enough to think he can beat the mm -hmm. charges. That's right. Uh, dude doesn't I listen also, to his lawyers. Uh, hey, yeah. He does not yeah, listen right to his too, lawyers, Rob. man. He was on that media tirade. <laughs> All of his lawyers were like, shut up. You're right about shut that, bro. Shut the hell up, man. What this are you doing? Is. And then Sam Bateman Freed, like, I got this. I got this. And then next thing you know. And they're like, you'll never get this. <laughs> so now, you'll now you this, know, his right. lawyers are like, yo, plead guilty. Plead guilty. It wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if dude is just You're like, right. you know what? I got this. I got this. No, you're right. You're right. Absolutely. That could be the case, too, because we know and we've seen him definitely not take the advice uh, of his lawyers. So, hell, who who knows, man? It's just as the world turns. Soap opera, <laughs> crypto edition. Bro, the documentaries in two years are going to be fire. Epic. Fire. They're going to be so Epic. dope. The FTX docuseries is going to be phenomenal. You know, they do on, uh, I think it was on HBO Max, they were doing those eight or 10 series that like Matthew McConaughey on one of them with Ethan Hawke, forget what it was called. Uh, but really, really good that. high profile people. I think we're going to get one of them. I'm in a, I'm in a documentary over a, a crypto scandal that will be showing on Netflix this year. You were on Quadriga um, too, right? The Quadriga one or yeah, for a quick second. Yeah. 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 Trust no one. Hey, how uh, do we, how do we get uh, one of those spots, bro? You got connects or mm -hmm. I'm trying yeah, to get on. TV. Saying, saying, bro. No. My mom always said I got the face no. of an actor. So. Shut yeah, you don't. I don't? You don't. I said she says I do. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, Damn, you don't. bro, that's no. cold, man. Come on, no, blood's supposed way. to be warm, so not cold. Know, man. It's, just, it's just rant. It's just like You that reptile blood. Just, you that cold blood. They just hit me. I'm cold-blooded, baby. Cold-blooded. No, but they just reached yeah. out to me. It was crazy. It, I don't know how. No you surprised clue. Dan. You did. You surprised Dan Freeberg for snitching. But but look, I'm not surprised. You know why, CB? You've been in the game for so long, bro. Uh, you're so well spoken. You know your stuff. Uh, you gotta give yourself some more credit, my friend. You see that? That's how you know. Be nice to people. Is he frozen? No, he's not frozen. frozen. No, I'm not. I'm not. I was just in <laughs> awe of the words that you were spewing. He was. He was absorbing it. So bro. yeah, I was absorbing it, man. I'm just. I'm getting my flowers while I'm here. Thank you. Mm. Hallelujah. We got plenty more. I'm surprised so, uh, Dan was snitching, bro. To get back, back. Why are you surprised? The guy got off scot free on Ultimate Bets. He probably cut a deal somehow with them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stop snitching. That ain't never happened. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm just thoroughly confused that that all these switch around switcher rules that are going on here. I, I just knew Freiburg would be uh, one of the ones like uh, what's her name, Caroline and Caroline. Sweet Caroline. Dang, dang a lang, wang a lang. No, nah, you got the Gary. wrong Caroline song. It's Gary the, uh, Wang. Caroline. Caroline. She's the reason for the though. word I, snitch. I, I thought he would be like them two, you know, just straight, you know, flipping and just pleading guilty. I know he, he has, like you said, Dave, he has to have some understanding of the day to day fraud that was going on at Alameda or, and, and or FTX. He had to know. No yeah. way. Of course he knew, man. Of course he knew. Uh, it's just crazy that, like, and Robin, uh, Robin thinks that 
everyone's ganging up on SPF, and he, when if he takes a plea deal, he's, he's gonna just on Spiegel, he, he's gonna start bringing other people down. As, maybe like easy. The thing is, he ain't gonna go down by himself. He ain't gonna he ain't gonna go down quietly, man. And I think you know. What we're seeing is that everybody's snitching on them. Everybody's flipping on them. Everybody done turned their back on them. And all that whole little circle of uh, sex party people that he hung out with. Anyways, he ain't got no friends. And so he's going to be scorned. And he's facing over 100 years in prison. I'm telling you, he's going to be sitting in front of those uh, the Department of Justice and the prosecutors. He's like, look, man, you want to you hear some more fraud? Uh, he's wor- he, he ran the second largest exchange uh, at the time. Uh, he's... Uh, Got all kinds of ties uh, to to politicians, and then on top of that, he's worked with a lot of top people in crypto, who I'm sure aided and embedded in some fraudulent activities, or at least he's aware of it, or that he is he has rumors or whatever it is. Or people have come up to him and be like, "Hey, man, you know what Binance is doing? Hey, you know what they're doing? Or maybe they're complicit, did something together." I'm telling you, when throughout the time from now to this court date, we're gonna get dropped bomb after bomb where. At where Sam Bateman Freed is out here trying to dime people out, bro. And I'm telling you, he's probably got a list super long of uh, corrupt ass people, man. You think CZ's on that bro, list? This is, how, this is how it's going to go down. This is how it's going to go down, guys. This crypto dime is speaking now. This is not crypto right. blood. Talk to me. Okay. Mm. All right. Speak so uh, out of the East comes a judgment of 20 years for Sam Bateman Freed. Okay. He's going to get 20 years. He's 30. He'll get out at 50 years old. Still got a decent life to finish out. I know he hit some of those cryptos. So 20 years based off a plea deal he takes? Or he's going to go to trial and get 20 years? No, he's not going to go to trial. Okay. He's not going to go to trial. He can't go to trial. He's going to, as you stated, David, he's going to switch his plea to guilty, you know, leading up to October. And then he's going to, he's going to take the 20. He's only 30 years old. And you know, try to not, be on good behavior and get out early? Can't with feds. Oh, you can't? Oh, okay. Interesting. I don't know, man. That's, uh, yeah. yeah. So, All right. So. 20, 20's not bad for a 30 year old. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, yeah. He rats some people out. Do 10 years. Not. 10? Who can he rat out? Everyone's ratted on him. That's the thing. Like, he's the <laughs> last. He has it's no It's in his own now. little area, though. I mean, you got to remember who was the earliest investor in uh, in FTX, Binance. You know, uh, there's movement of liquidity between all the exchanges. So who knew that he was doing something, or who did he borrow money from that was illegal? And be like, hey man, this person's doing illegal back activity as well. Who else works for him that used to work at another exchange or another crypto project that he's got firsthand dirt from? Where he's like, oh, that's what they do over there. I'm telling you, man, he's going to blow some shit up. Blow some shit up. I don't know. We're all speculating. I don't know, man. We'll see. Yeah, it's all speculation. Well, we have some possible, I don't know if it's good news or bad news, or it's just, it's still news. Uh, U.S. authorities to seize the $460 million worth of Robinhood shares that are in the FTX fraud case. U.S. prosecutors are moving to seize the Robinhood market's uh, shares that are linked to Sam Bankman Freed. Now, just a quick uh, quick background. Uh, so these shares, there was three people or three entities that were trying to get a hold of them. One was BlockFi saying that in their deal, it, th- these uh, these shares were pitched as collateral. You also have an FTX creditor, Jonathan Ben Shimon. And then you have, of course, Sam Bankman Freed himself. They all filed court actions in an attempt to gain control of the shares. Uh, Bangman Fried and Gary Wang formed a holding company in May 2022 called Emergent Fidelity Technologies to purchase 56 million Robinhood shares with 540 million in loans from Alameda Research. It was essentially a shell company. Uh, Shapiro told a bankruptcy court hearing in Delaware that the Department of Justice does not believe the shares were the property of a bankruptcy estate and its ownership could be determined in a forfeiture proceeding. Where do you, who should, who should get this money? Should it be the consumer, the customer who had, who's mm-hmm. essentially their funds were the ones who bought them. Should it be BlockFi because they were, they were legally were, get, were, were put up as collateral for a loan that was never paid back? Mm-hmm. Or I don't even know who this Jonathan guy is. Or should it be Sam? CB? Well, well, we know who should get their money. 
who, who should get this money is the customers. But unfortunately, mm-hmm. bankruptcy law and proceedings don't work that way. I don't know if you guys heard. I'll be talking about this on my two Satoshis today later on. Um, but Celsius, the judge in Celsius case, um, made the ruling that the funds that were locked in there are not the customer's funds. So that yeah. that was a precedent set. Uh, I was waiting to see what would happen with the Celsius case. Um, but were I you think surprised, though? I mean, I know we're kind of going off topic a little bit here, but that was actually the next piece of news I was going to cover. But in the terms of service, it specifically says when you hand over your yeah. crypto, it is not yours. It is ours. So I, I guess, were you surprised when that judgment came by? But, well, okay. then, so then on top of that, just, just, to, just to co-sign on that, is that FTX says that they're not going to misappropriate your funds, not move them around, and they are yours. So per right. the language, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so really you had two right. different <laughs> business models there. I think with the business model that was Celsius, it was it was hey, there is risk and it's it's written in the terms of service. Uh, while FTX, they're saying there's no risk, and they wrote that in the terms of service. And here, and I'll, I will throw uh, I'll go ahead and throw this on the screen so you guys know kind of what we're talking about here. Um, so this is what CB's talking about. Like I said, actually the next piece of news we're going to cover. Um, Celsius wins right to the earned deposits, uh, and the customers did push back. They wanted control of these said deposits, and uh, they weren't. And so, hey. Yeah, Dave, you asked me if if I was surprised that this, Yeah, um, I was indifferent about the decision because this was going to be the first case where we would see what a judge ruled. Because, I mean, you could look at it various ways. You can look at it multiple ways as far as who should those funds be um assigned back to so now we know and i'm sure other cases are going to follow this this path this ruling so it's not good for us but again not your keys not your cheese don't deal with c5 this is a lesson learned for i think all of us who have uh done and dibbled and dabbled into the c5 world in the last couple of years Hey man, this don't, is what this is what you get. Don't you think that for our industry to grow in the way that we imagine it and that we want it, we need a stable and trustable CFI uh, to onboard and manage assets for people that aren't willing to do it themselves. Uh, the average waitress or bartender or electrician that. W- notices the failures of our government and monetary policy but doesn't have the time or effort doesn't want to put in the effort to go in custody themselves yeah tell them to go to uh bank of america jp morgan that's where they need to go <laughs> that's what jim that's kramer what likes for. jim kramer likes jp morgan yeah, just, Chase. just go over there like if you're scared go to church okay this is crypto <laughs> we need to have self-custody and we need to take care of our own and I think the, yeah. the technology will grow at some point. It's not there yet, Rob. I understand. Like, this is not for the faint of heart, the, the, pe- the people that are not technical still. I think um, we got a long way to go in that regard. So, yes, we, we definitely have to improve in, in the onboarding of, of people into the space. But ultimately, this technology was created for us to self-custody, you know? So... So, no, I think eventually the, the 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 future looks like everyone self custody, uh, self custodying their funds. If that's a word, <laughs> I don't know if that's practical enough right now for it to get the massive. No, not right now. Up. No, not so we'll right now. We'll see if something new comes up. Um, I honestly think, man, I think banks are going to start custodying crypto. Your J.P. Morgan Chase, your Bank of America, and unfortunately, people yeah. are going to right people back are going to go we're, there. We're, back, but, we're right back to Web Two. Is uh, what, yeah. what, what? What have we done? We just literally gone in three sixty. If that's yeah. going to and, and, and I, I agree. I think that is what's going to happen. But that's not the right thing that has happened. But then, what happens yeah. if you get the two thousand eight situation again with the banks and they go under? And say they don't get the bailout next time around, which but at least they at have that option point, of getting the bailout. They keep kicking the can down the road. At some point, no, they'll get banks are going to fail, and time. the government ain't going to be there to ba- uh, bail them out. Not to mention, uh, when the banks did fail in 2008, 
Uh, there was, there was, uh, I think like 20 something banks that did file for bankruptcy then. And so even in 2008, yeah, they might've been smaller banks, but if they're custodying your crypto you're in the same situation as Voyager again, right? But instead of it being Voyager, it's a FDIC insured bank. Yeah. Well, um, I just think that if we focus on going the route of DeFi, then all of the risk um, would, would mostly be um, transparently seen on the blockchain, right? So there were yeah. very few DeFi platforms that went under during this whole um, 3AC Celsius situation. And I think that's not getting a lot of attention. That is, that's really like the aha moment or should have been. But unfortunately, the mainstream media is controlled by the ones that run all the banks. So they're not going to highlight the fact that DeFi made it through. Um, yeah. But I think they can't control. I it. think. Yeah, I think the reason the thing about DeFi, though, where we need um, it's not fully developed and ready for prime time. We, we're going to have to have some type of insurance mechanism. In place for crypto. Um, there is a company actually. Really, there is a mm -hmm. company, the first company to do that, uh, and they, I believe, they take a certain percentage, or I don't know how they figure out exactly, but there will be, in the next run up in DeFi, there will be an option for you to have insurance on your on your DeFi and for institutions to have it as well. You will pay a premium. Not sure the specifics of the name of the company, but I, I know I've read it multiple times. I mean, it's not too far off the business yeah, model we have now. I mean, you pay you pay for the you pay for that visa for visa security to give you your money back if your credit card gets stolen, you pay for that. Like you know what I mean? It might they might be right. say, Hey, hey, don't worry about it. You're not we're not gonna charge you for these. But over the time with fees or whatever, all the money they rake in, right? That's all that's all baked into it. And they didn't yeah, have so to pay people to be, back for a lost credit card a layer. Stolen. Yeah. Yeah, there needs to be an insurance layer on crypto. As you stated, Rob, an insurance layer that siphons off a little bit because we can do micropayments in, in crypto. So it can be a, a half a penny, a quarter of a penny every transaction, whatever the whatever it is. But that needs to go into some type of insurance layer that helps uh, mitigate. Or, or pay back people when we have losses because we, we're going to continually have losses. That's just the nature of the game. You can't protect or secure every attack vector in any yeah. tech stack. So uh, I think that that is when crypto goes mainstream. It's not regulation. I mean, I guess regulation will have to come with insurance layer possibly, but yeah, that's to me was when crypto what do takes you off. Think what do you think about the ease of use when it comes to DeFi? Because I think that I think that might be uh, what's kind of stopping the mainstream adoption. Is I think that if you if you have something built on top of DeFi that itself is already decentralized, say it's a DApp that's built on there that essentially is decentralized itself, and it makes it so that way there's less errors available like it won't allow you to send ethereum to a bitcoin wallet address as an example uh it mm -hmm. gives you a uh a readable wallet address uh it makes uh swapping pretty simple without having to understand what slippage is and all this i i just think that if you take the complexity out of it i mean we're we're familiar with it but you know your average investor if they want to self-custody they don't want to go down the rabbit hole, but yet they want to, you know, get into DeFi. I just think simplicity and ease of use is something that that is necessary for the next bull run. Yeah. If DeFi is going to explode. Yes, I agree. I agree. And uh, what does that look like? I, I don't know, man. It just takes time. This is such a young industry. It's just going to take trial and error to um, to figure out those little new we're like super early like what, what people don't understand Period. is we are so early if you just take out just speculation of price what what crypto and blockchain can actually do we are so early guys what you got to understand is you are literally at the the ground level of this burgeoning technology of web3 of blockchain 
that's really going to change how people do everything, <clears throat> not just people, but businesses and corporations, even governments. And if you're patient and you stay up on everything and you watch Sensitive Crypto and CBTV, then you will be in a position to, to set yourself up moving forward. And you'll, you know, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, when everyone's like, oh my God, Web3 is so cool. Like, yeah, bro, I've been doing this for 15 years. <laughs> what do you need to know? I got yeah, you. Yeah, but the, the thing I, I put emphasis on, David, and you're right, we are early, but we may be late for the speculation aspect of crypto. That's an interesting I, point. I don't know if I need to explain that further, but uh, we're early in the sense of if you guys can think of a some type of business to to integrate or create that will run in Web3, yes, we are super early going to be able to make a lot of money build a lot of wealth from that but just picking a coin closing your eyes and waiting a couple of years or not even a couple of years like you know how the last bull run was but yeah. you know waiting three months or four months to see a 10x 100x uh, i think those days are very numbered you may see a few but they're they're going to be far and few between so you're going to have to start taking this industry to me uh more seriously if you want to make money you're going to have to start earning your crypto that's how you're going to earn your wealth you think the meme coin uh craze pump is over you think it, you think that'll no, come back no. next bull run? it's not over bro. yeah i do it's not over there's so no, many degenerates out there myself included <laughs> yeah it's not over but again when you see another 100x out of shiba in you we see another 100x out of dogecoin dude what are you talking about ships going to a dollar bro i don't think so man yeah, how do you not think so? Are you crazy? Thank you, Vlad. Are you crazy, bro? Him. A five hundred trillion dollar market cap is totally feasible, man. I don't know where you've so, been redoing so your realistic. research. I know you're right. You're right. You know, like man. yeah, yeah. shit will be more than worth the entire country, yeah. the entire world. Yes. Yeah, awesome. um, yeah, right. Right. We should uh, now. We should those to a uh, dollar is is possible. Anything's possible if you put your mind to and it. Also, right? Sam Bankman Fried providing. Uh, insight on uh covid and pandemic uh relief and uh implementing uh protocol it's also plausible right yeah yeah so mm. is uh so is robin <laughs> pronouncing names correctly i don't know oh, that's uh that's not very plausible uh but uh we're gonna wrap this thing up cb we're gonna let you go my friend you know where we're going where we're, we're going? going to see yes man c e oh i'm so jealous Yes, I'm so oh, man, we're so excited. We were gonna go check out all the new VR headsets and VIP, baby. Gonna do some content. It. Yeah, we'll put a video okay, together. Good, yeah, good. we'll put some content together. Good, good. Now I'll look out for it. I'll look out for it for sure. But yeah, awesome, it's been man. a pleasure, guys. Thank you for yeah, having man. me. Yeah, man. You got anything else to uh, leave? Like, you got anything to leave us with? Yeah, tune in later, guys. Come over to CBTV. I'll be doing my two satoshis at. Uh, I think I have it scheduled at four oh five today. And I'll be on BitBoy around, not actually, it's not BitBoy anymore. It's around the blockchain. They have their yeah. own channel. Yeah. I'll be on at five o'clock. So come tune in. I think Rice TVX will be on with me. So yeah, cool. Busy day. Thanks awesome, for having man. me, though. Well, we appreciate you, brother. We know you're a busy man. Guys, go support Crypto Blood CBT, uh, CBTV. The, uh, the uh, link to his YouTube channel is in the description. Also, go follow him on Twitter. Go check out his live stream. Go support him on ATB. And if you're on there, go drop an hola and say you're here for our friend, Crypto Blood. We appreciate you, bro. I believe you're coming back on in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, I'll be on hola. in a couple of weeks, guys. Did you see, Eric, did you see that video? You see our year on wrap-up? Uh, we had yeah. you on there. Where Robin had an hola, guys. Uh, I got to go watch it. Yeah, yeah. I got to watch it. Yeah, The you're first on two there, minutes buddy. of Robin. Just, hola, 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 hola. How you hating, bro? <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> Player, Rocco, name, I'm player, sick player, and tired player, of this guy. I swear to God, who hired you? <laughs> God. Anyway, CB, thank you so All much, right, bro. Guys. We'll be checking out your show Peace. later today. Thank you. Take care, my friend. All thank right. you again. Yep. Guys, if you're tired of Rocco just clowning on me all the time. You know who I'm not tired of? It's Crypto Blood. I'm glad we got him coming back on. Me too. You know who I'm also kind of not tired of is Crunk C. Every time he's in here, he says I'm new here. <laughs> <laughs> Crunk C, we love you, my friend. Uh, speaking of new here, we do have a few new people, uh, so I will uh, give some uh, love out to the uh, the chat here. Uh, you got your last chance. If you're new here, say hello so we can drop an uh, hola back at you. Hello. And uh, we have 
uh rusty chucky supreme 100 <laughs> jamie simply chris camel toe trucking diamond camel toe? sauce crypto oh. dylan altcoin dj leroy essel uh darthic lone randy mccormick uh colin and virtual really real <laughs> reality uh yeah i'm bad with names sorry yeah, um uh, yeah that about uh wraps up uh, my name calling there man so yeah <sighs> Rocco. So, so we're gonna do Dave. Now you put your finger Dave. down. Put your finger Go. down. Put your finger down. Put me on Go, camera. Dave. Put your finger down. Put me on camera. Wait. Go. Wait for it. It's the first one of the year together, Rocco. <laughs> Rocco. <laughs> friends, family, friends, and fans. That felt so good. Family and friends. We thank you guys so much for joining us on this Thursday. Make sure to come back tomorrow at same time, 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We'll have our main man, Forrest, on to do some amazing TA and analysis. Also, go check out our merch store. Go follow us on social media. Go do all of it. Everything. Rocco did put some new stuff on that merch store, guys. Pretty cool stuff. Go check it out. And uh, that's all we got on behalf of myself, Robin Rocco. And a big thank you to Crypto Blood. We thank you, guys. We love you. And we'll see you tomorrow. Peace. What happened to the music?